welcome to Sonographers in the Cities, where we connect through sound with your host, Lynn and Giselle. SITC fam. Welcome to another episode of Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. I'm so glad I was able to um, finally say SITC. <laughs> I don't know why it's like always hard for me S-I-T-C. to... Um, S-I-T-C. S-I-T-C. I don't know. It's kind of like a... Uh, what, what's that? Tongue twister. Tongue twister. Say it three times. No, you try. S I T C S I T C S I T C. Okay. Your Maybe turn. You can do it. I can't. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Um, we, as always, appreciate your support of our baby podcast. Um, today, we will be talking about... Should you go to a non-accredited ultrasound program? Should you? Should you? Should you? I don't know. Or should you not? So it's basically an episode about non-accredited versus accredited programs. And this is very common for people to ask about in the community of ultrasound. And if you ask any sonographer or any ultrasound technologist and any group, any platform, anywhere you ask them, they're all going to say go to an accredited program or will recommend you to go to an accredited program. Um, But there are a lot of us who did not go to an accredited program. And by accreditation, we're talking about which one, Lynn? Which one are we talking about? We're talking mostly about ARDMS accreditation as well as CCI. Mm -hmm. Or mostly, it's, no, wait, hold on, hold on. That's uh, just like, no, 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 KHEP. We're talking about (laughs) KHEP accreditation. I, I'm getting ahead yes. of myself. Yes. Um, we're talking about KHAP accreditation because it is the largest organization that credentials um sonography programs to be able to um hold on. No, sonography students in the accredited program to be able to sit for the ARDMS or CCI. Am I correct? Pretty much. But long story short, it's basically yes. if you don't go to a KHEP program, <laughs> then you're going to have a harder time. So you're going to have a harder time. the boards. Yes. Um, so your plain and simple straight up answer, should you go to a non-accredited ultrasound program? Obviously, it's up to you. We can't decide for you. We don't know your situation. And this is just some... Uh, tough love out there because there are a lot of us who had no idea about this non-accredited versus accredited school. A lot of you guys are doing your research and a lot of the people who went to a non-accredited program had to struggle a lot. And so you are learning from them that you shouldn't go that route unless you 100% know you're able and capable of sitting for ARDMS and CCI. So if you guys listen to Ashley, from our uh, last guest this month, she talked about her program. Her program is non-accredited. It's not KHEP accredited. And that's what we mean by accreditation because everyone looks at KHEP. You can go to caahep.org, figure out if there's a school near you. And if there's not a school near you, that's where people go and look into the non-accredited program. So Lynn, was your program accredited? That was very well said. I'm just like listening to you talk. Um, yes, my program um, was accredited. Um, the reason I to- chose my program was because it's accredited. Um, my thinking of why I chose that program was because of the current job openings at the time that I was looking because my end goal of going to school is to get a job right after, right? right. So um those uh, job openings, one of the requirements is graduate of an accredited program. Mm-hmm. And I actually do get 
um, questions about um, my program from like now that I'm working from my colleagues, coworkers, they're like, oh, where did you go? And I was like, this program, they're like, is it accredited or is it not? So they really, be, I don't know, in my, um, I guess, New York City, you know, yeah, certain say, employers. You can, she can only speak for herself. Yes, I can only speak for myself. <laughs> and because I'm looking at jobs in New York, uh, most of the employers, they want that accreditation, you know. So my program was accredited. Just how was your program accredited? So mine was actually not accredited by KHEP. And the thing about that is I could say the same for Las Vegas. So this is why I say Lynn can only speak for herself because for us here in Las Vegas, every single job description will probably tell you you need to be from a program or school with like an associates or bachelors from an accredited program. They might throw that word in there. I mean, I've seen it in some of these job applications, but how am I working then if I went to a non-accredited school, you yeah. know, and I've worked at every single place basically out here you could probably work at. Mm -hmm. um, and I know all the people around town, ultrasound, like we talk about is small. And so in Las Vegas, especially, it's very small. Everyone knows each other. Um, there's only so many places you could work out here in a small, I mean, it's a big city, but like in a small community of ultrasound technologists. And so me, I came from a non-accredited school, but it was a bachelor's program. So with ARDMS, you can sit for ARDMS if you have gone through a bachelor's degree in sonography. So the difference between me and Lynn is that I had to graduate first and then take my ARDMS exams. So she was able to take her ARDMS exams before she graduated and before she was basically done with school. And a lot of people who go the accredited route are able to take their board exams while they're still in school. And so that's one of the perks of that. For me, I had to wait a little bit longer. So that's one of the major differences, I, I guess you could say, for non-accredited versus accredited programs. And it's not a bad thing to go to a non-accredited program. And I want people to know that because, you know, it's still a program. You're still going to be able to sit for ARDMS or CCI. You got to make sure you're able to, though. Like, don't go to one that says, oh, it costs this amount of money. You know, we guarantee you this, this, this. But then what if you go through it and then there's something that changes later or you know it's like read the fine print almost right like yes just, just kind of make sure you're choosing a program where you know for sure you're going to be able to sit for a board exam and a lot of non-accredited programs actually make you work for like a full year before you can actually take an exam I think that's also one of the reasons why people don't like non-accredited programs that's also, that's um under one of the prerequisites I remember reading. It's like you have to have like one year of work experience mm -hmm. to be able to sit for the specialty exams. And I remember think reading that I'm like, if I'm uh not registered, how can I work one for one year to be able to sit for being registered, you know? Mm -hmm. So I took the easy route. I that's why I chose an accredited program, even though my program costs a lot. Um, I think another thing about accredited programs is that they cost more than non-accredited programs, and um, so that program because for a program to be accredited, they have to meet the guidelines of the um accreditations. So like students have to attend certain hours of labs certain hours of clinicals, certain hours of lectures to be able to, you know, sit, be cleared to sit for the registry. And um, to me, like, that's for them to do that already. I just want to attend the program and then sit for the boards before I graduate so that I can get a job immediately after. So that's why I chose um, accredited program. But like Giselle said, it's up to you, up to 
where you are located, what programs are available for you. Maybe only non-accredited programs are available to you and you have no choice. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. just like some of the, uh, not pros and cons, but the differences between an accredited and a non-accredited program. Yeah, one part that I want to touch about too is the way that Lynn mm -hmm. said the the way your program was. A lot of times an accredited program is much more organized. It's much more, um, I guess you could say not chaotic because I get a lot of people who tell me their or, uh, program is very unorganized and the teachers, you know, they're not, it's not that they're not great, but it's just, it's not, helping them succeed in where they want to succeed. And I feel like non-accredited programs sometimes are a little bit harder or you have to push yourself probably like 50,000 times more to get through that program because it doesn't have that accreditation. Like, so KHEP really does, it's the guidelines. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie, when I went to school at UNLV, like, it was kind of a mess, you know, and it probably still is a little bit of a mess, but it still is a way where you can become a sonographer. And even though it's not KHEP accredited like CSN, uh, you're still able to get a job if you go to UNLV and get a bachelor's versus going to CSN and getting an associate's that is accredited. Um, there's no difference. And I tell people all the time, just choose choose your battle and which battle do you want to go through because uh, CSN has a different it gives you like a different type of program and a different way of getting in than it does at UNLV and that's the thing that you guys have to do is decide and choose which school so if you do listen to Ashley's interview she was looking in between the two programs one was accredited and one was non-accredited and she ended up choosing the non-accredited one so she had her reasons for choosing that one. Obviously, I had my reasons for choosing UNLV over CSN. One, I was already going there for nursing and all of my stuff transferred over. So if you're in that kind of situation. And two, I knew people who went to that school and graduated and are now working. So I just followed footsteps of other people and I asked them, hey, how'd you get to the program? What'd you do? And that's essentially what happened with Ashley. She found out somebody who went to that school. And if it is credible and non-accredited and you're still able to get a job, then if that's the better option for you, sometimes that's better to do that than to do the accredited route. But like Lynn said, she wanted the easier, um, I, I would say like, you can be a confident. More, a more streamlined process. Like, yeah, you can be confident yeah. that you're getting what you're getting because yes. when you go to a non-accredited school, you don't know what you're getting. And mm -hmm. unless you know someone who went there or someone who can vouch for that non-accredited program, you're kind of, it's like a risky, risky situation. Um, and a lot of the people who I've talked to who have been in those kinds of situations are from non-accredited programs. So this is just why we say, you know, go to an accredited program. Um, but still, I tell people to go to UNLV, you know, and that's mm -hmm. a non-accredited program, but it is a bachelor's degree. So look at your situation, where you're at in life. Some people are coming out of high school. Some people are switching careers in their mid-20s, mid-30s, late 40s, you know. And I, I do know some people who went to CSN, which is an which is an accredited program and they are people who switched careers and that one takes less than a bachelor's degree right so they just decided that one it's just it's all about preference and what you want for yourself but look at caahep.org as well as ardms.org and cci is it dot org i'm not sure because i don't know <laughs> cci or is it yeah, .com? Me neither. I CCI. I think I just it's .org. It. it should yeah. be. Yeah. So I don't know if that like kind of clears it up. But yeah, long story short, it's it's up to you and do your research before you choose. But we're not going to sit here and tell you, yes, go to that non-accredited program or yes, go to that accredited program. Um, because every program is different. One, like the non-accredited program might be easier for you to get in than the accredited program. 
and the accredited program might take longer than the non-accredited program. So do your research, choose your schools and kind of, I think, lay out your reasoning for choosing one or the other. I would say do a pros and cons list because that's what I did. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just remembered while you were talking about Ashley and I forgot to mention it when we were talking with her. I did reach out to her school because really? I was amazing. Yes, but they never responded to me. Oh, really? Why? Yeah. If you're like, listening, oh. <laughs> what do you, you want to ask them? I wanted more information about the program because it was not accredited, but it was like significantly less than my, my program. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, since I already have a bachelor's, I could go to a non-accredited program, but, um, I was so hesitant and I want to, to like meet the program director and see how it is. And, you know, they never got back to me. And then this Mm -hmm. program, my program, you know, they reached out instantly and mm. you know, I was scheduled an interview like it was very like fast so I was like okay they seem structured yeah yeah but it's, then it's, it's a bit different purpose. yeah it's mm-hmm. a bit different because um like UNLV for example you could probably get them to respond to you just as quick as CSN would mm-hmm. because it's a big university yeah but she's at a training like medical mm-hmm. program yes. I don't know it's not a bachelor's I think no, I think she it's already just had like a, a vo- yeah, vocational trainings, mm-hmm. which is similar. No, which is the same as my program because mm-hmm. my program is mostly for that I've seen is like people who are changing careers and mm-hmm. um or, or yeah. already have like real life experiences that wants to change a career to healthcare. Yeah. And and that's good that you yeah. guys have that cuz I don't know of a school out here in Las Vegas like that. You know, I mean, I feel like since there's only two places that I know of right now, <laughs> CSN or UNLV, mm-hmm. uh most of the sonographers come out from there or they're coming in from another city, you know. So those schools are probably good too. You just have to see if they're accredited or not accredited. Yeah. Um and oh, what one thing I like to add, mm-hmm. um, if like if you're thinking about a non-accredited program, um, just know that some employers do, you know, hire you to work before you get your registries. They just, you know, make a a requirement of like you have to be registered within three months, six months. So it's not the end of the world if you yeah. don't get your registry after your program Mm -hmm. so there's there's opportunities for you to if you go to a not choose to go to a non-accredited program and you don't have your um what is experience to sit to to uh, qualify for the prerequisites to sit for the um the registries then you can still you can still be hired and you can still work while studying to get the registry so I just thought of that I'm like yeah yeah because a lot of people do wonder how do they do that but it is a possibility it's harder you do have to find someone who's giving you that opportunity but yes. I had um a coworker who I used to work with before he left and he went to school outside of Vegas somewhere else and it was not accredited and he had to work before getting registered so he did say that was very hard to do but he was able to do it so it's not impossible but you just have to find somewhere that will allow you to work get your scanning in and uh figure out if you can get your prereq signed on ardms.org so it all kind of is full circle because you want to become a registered sonographer you have to be able to get ardms or um cci under your belt so look at those requirements there and see where you want to go it kind of is hard because you don't know where to start but if you're trying to figure out how to start i would say look in your area first because that's how you narrow it down and then if you're willing to open up and go somewhere not where you live let's say let's say if i lived in some like 
small town and I wanted to go somewhere else, I would have to think about, do I want to go to like Texas or California, New York? What schools are there in uh, Minnesota? You know, or like I heard Mayo Clinic's really good. What, what? How do they become sonographers over there? Where do they typically get their people from? So it's all about doing your research and trying to see what you want for yourself. And that's ultimately where you have to begin is choosing the type of sonographer you want to be because you have to pick your school and compare those schools and those programs. And then you have that question of, is it non-accredited or accredited? And some people actually go into it not realizing that that's a question they should ask themselves. They just pick a school. And then later on down the line, not realize, oh, I should have picked an accredited school. Because mm -hmm. no one just no one just talks about it. Like, we're accredited, you know, like, they don't, know. unless they're a school that is promoting themselves as accredited through KHEP, I think most schools don't really. Because I had no idea when I was looking for schools. I didn't think that was a thing. You know, I just was like, where can I go to become a sonographer? <laughs> I didn't know either until, um, you know, looking at job openings and they mm -hmm. specifically mention it. That's why I like did some research about it. Yeah. And one of the things that just popped up in my mind is like, why are we like stressing the importance of being registered? you know, all this, um, was it dominoes, like finding an accredited or non-accredited program, just like, should you become registered or non-registered? And the reason that I think, um, or I, I was told that sonographers needs to be registered or these employers are looking for registered sonographers and technologists is because they want their, um, labs or uh, facilities to be accredited. So they need accredited sonographers, technologists to be accredited. So that's mm -hmm. why they stress the importance of hiring a, a um, registered uh, candidate. Yeah. So if you work in a big hospital, you know, or like a department, like radiology department that stresses the importance of being registered, it's because they themselves, their company need to mm -hmm. hire registered sonographers or not even just sonographers, registered phlebotomists, technologists mm -hmm. that do x-ray, MRI, CT, they also need to be registered. You, you wouldn't want a nurse to take care of you that's not a registered nurse, an RN. You know, you have to be registered to work in that hospital. So it's very similar to ultrasound and a lot of times there are small clinics, like little tiny clinics where they go <laughs> in and just, you know, check baby gender mm -hmm. or they just do quick scans or just like, hey, here, look at baby. You know, while those are great, they might not have a registered sonographer working there and they are not able to diagnose your child. They are not able to, you know, tell you if there's something wrong with that you know, the fetus. So mm -hmm. they are not technically able to do that kind of stuff because they're not registered, if that makes sense. Because uh, a lot of times people will come into my hospital in the ER and they're like, oh, the clinic that I was at, they told me to come here to the hospital because mm -hmm. they must have saw something abnormal oh. or they must have seen something that's like kind of, I don't know, it's at least they're like, hmm, what's that? Mm -hmm. they can do that they can tell the pay I mean their client because they're not technically a patient there yeah. they're just someone coming in to check the gender of their baby they can't Interesting. yeah they can't be like oh your baby has a cleft palate right because yeah. they're not registered they don't have a doctor there it's not actually a accredited place to do that kind of stuff so they they will probably either tell you to go to the hospital or it can be missed they can miss that, and um, that's why it's important for you to go to an OBGYN or somewhere with registered OB sonographers so that they can correctly diagnose your fetus. Um, and that's the importance of being registered because there's people who probably do ultrasound out there who don't know what they're looking at, and that's scary. Yeah.
there there are definitely places that are you know they do hire um unregistered sonographers and technologists mm -hmm. so yeah. so it's just i mean like if you want to become a sonographer well, not you're not going to be really called a sonographer if you're doing that because mm -hmm. you're not registered but if you want to become an ultrasound tech and work in a clinic and be able to just see genders and like things like that you know you're able to do that you but it's it's your choice and that's what you want to do but lynn and i are here <laughs> to promote education yes. becoming a registered sonographer that's why we're sonographers in the cities nothing against people who have clinics and aren't registered we have nothing against you it's just if you want to become registered and you want to go to a program and ultimately work in a hospital or a clinic that requires you to be registered that is what you should do but you know there are people out there who are working and not registered so totally agree i've worked <laughs> with people who are not registered yeah no, not I, worked. I was in clinicals yeah i know people so. who have been doing ultrasound for 20 plus year and are not re 20 plus years and are not registered and yeah. that's fine you know but they can't work at my hospital you know, they yeah. can't work in a majority of the places out here because you have mm -hmm. to. So it's kind of like do do what's best for you. Um, yes. Ultimately, if you want to work in what we're becoming like sonographers, then you have to get registered and go to an accredited program. That's our top advice for most people. Yes. And Lynn is a new grad. Look at her new scrubs. Oh yeah, <laughs> guess who got this for me? Hold on, guess who got this? I called this the um, Giselle top. Wait, I just <laughs> I just uh, spilled the beans already. Oh, so cute. Mm. She Look at even her. did embroidery. Oh yes. my God. Look at her figs. Shout out figs. You want to sponsor us? <laughs> Thank you so much, Giselle. You're welcome. Congratulations on everything that you've done. I think I'm so proud I of you. I think of you when I wear this. So it Aww. makes me happy on my work day. <laughs> like, like I can bring a little bit of Giselle in Las Vegas with me. How cute. Well, <laughs> I was telling her, you know, because at her job, she has to wear that color. So, you know. It's a lighter blue. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's fine. <laughs> it's Hopefully still blue. One day, one day you'll get to work somewhere else where you can wear any colors. And I can wear so many all colors. the colors. Yeah. yeah, there's so many colors of figs. So if you guys are not watching and you're just listening on your way somewhere or doing something, you should turn on YouTube. Check out her scrubs. Also comment down below. Did you go to a non-accredited program or an accredited program? And let us know your experience because yes. we want to share all the experiences of whether you went to either or. You know, whether you graduated from a non-accredited program and you liked it or didn't like it, um, we would love to hear that. And we do talk to all of our guests. We ask them their stories. So you can go back, listen to any of our guests. We ask how their program was and uh, share with us your journey because that's what this is all about. We have nothing against non-accredited programs or accredited programs we believe you should choose on behalf of yourself and your situation yes <laughs> we, we really promote self um what's that self i don't know self decisions make your own decisions <laughs> no. i'm just kidding <laughs> yes you make your own decisions but mm -hmm. you know like you know yourself self I don't say I don't think it's esteem you trying to say know yourself like you only know yourself yes you so. only know yourself but so, so confidence so have confidence yeah. in yourself and knowing what works for you yeah exactly like we can offer all the advices that you know that's been asked to us we can answer every single thing but it won't that. be the correct answer if it's not right for you yeah and that's what I say in my YouTube videos too. It's like, I can only speak uh, upon myself and my experiences. I don't know what your guys' experiences are. Mm -hmm. Lynn and I have two totally different experiences. I know we all have different experiences, but the one goal is that we share the want and need to help others and become a sonographer and uh, use a machine and take lots of 
beautiful diagnostic images because we want to be registered diagnostic medical sonographers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for listening. Yes, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Um, we hope that it is helpful for you, for those who are, you know, in the pickle of designing your programs. Uh, we have other episodes that we've answered many of your questions and probably will answer your questions if um you have them. Um, so tune into our other episodes, and if we haven't answered your questions yet. You can send us a message on Instagram at Sonographers in the Cities or on the Facebook. Facebook and Instagram, you know, Instagram. Uh, cool. our, our um, Instagram page as well. Yes. All right, you guys. We'll talk soon. We'll be yeah. uh, on the next episode. We're actually going to talk <laughs> about is it easy to become a sonographer and is it easy to be a sonographer and is it easy because i'm sure you guys have heard that it's easy to become an ultrasound tech quote unquote yes. so we shall see think is about that easy? question mm. is it easy mm. we'll talk soon yes talk soon see you next week bye Hey, SITC fam. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to rate us five stars on any podcast platform. Leave us a review wherever you can. And don't forget to subscribe to LL Giselle on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and find us on Facebook at Sonographers in the Cities.